So this video is designed to follow the video on bisoprolol, so please watch that video prior to watching this one. So digoxin is a wonderful drug for rate controlling AF, atrial fibrillation, if bisoprolol fails to achieve rate control or if bisoprolol cannot be given either because the individual has too low blood pressure and bisoprolol will lower it further or because the individual isn't able to take tablets because bisoprolol is only available in an oral form rather than an intravenous form. Digoxin works on the atrioventricular node and helps to limit the frequency at which it conducts electrical signals through down to the ventricles. So let's go through some clinical examples of where it would be used. So let's say we have an individual who has fast AF and let's say they're on a good dose of bisoprolol already to try to rate control it. So bisoprolol would be the first line drug for rate controlling AF and a good dose of bisoprolol means a dose greater than 5 milligrams once a day. So let's say we have a frail 90 year old lady with fast AF and she's been put on bisoprolol, the dose has been gradually raised and she's now on the dose of 5 milligrams once daily and it isn't actually controlling the rate of her AF adequately. So let's say she's still going above 100 and we want now to give another treatment to try and bring it under control. We could raise the dose of bisoprolol further of course but in a frail little old lady 5 milligrams is a very good dose and it's questionable whether raising the dose any further is going to actually produce any further effect. 5 milligrams should be turning down the sympathetic stimulation to the heart quite considerably. So in this case we would add in digoxin as an adjunctive treatment so she'd stay on the bisoprolol 5 milligrams once daily but we'd add in digoxin as a second agent to rate control her AF. So how do we do this? Well, to understand the dosing of digoxin, you need to understand that it has a very long half-life. So its half-life is roughly 36 hours or a day and a half. So what that means is that when you take a dose of digoxin, that it's going to be absorbed by the gastrointestinal tract and it will enter the bloodstream and the level will rise up to some peak serum level after you've taken the dose. From there, it will then take a day and a half for that level to half. So it will take a day and a half for the body to excrete enough of the drug from the blood for the level within the blood to have halved in concentration. So when you have drugs with shorter half-lives, you can give the full dose every day. So this graph nicely illustrates this here. So we have time on the horizontal axis here, and then we have the level of the drug within the blood on the vertical axis here. So here is the beginning of one day, you take a dose of the drug, the level goes up. Now if the half-life is nice and short, we can see that the level of it is going to come completely back down to zero by the time that another day comes along. So this line here represents 24 hours later, so the beginning of another day. So this is one day, this is the next day. And then you can take the full dose again, and again it will come back down over the course of the next 24 hours, and you'll be ready then to take another full dose the next day. In contrast, in red here is what happens if the drug has a much longer half-life. So here we are at the beginning of day one. You give the full dose of the drug and take the level within the blood right up. Now, because the half-life is much longer, by the time 24 hours is up and you get to the beginning of the next day, the level has not come back down to zero. It's come down, but it's not come down to zero. And now you can see that we don't need to give a full dose again. If we gave a full dose again, it would rise up to a much higher level, potentially a toxic level. Now we just need to give a smaller top-up dose that will top up the amount that we've lost over the past 24 hours. So this is exactly how digoxin works with a half-life of 36 hours. We give a loading dose, the initial first big dose. We actually split this loading dose usually into two separate doses. So uh, we give usually 500 micrograms stat when we want to start the drug. So we give that right away. And then we give another 500 micrograms in six hours time. Sometimes people actually split this second 500 micrograms into two 250 microgram doses, one at six hours and then at one at 12 hours post the first initial dose. But I usually just 
have it as two separate doses, 500 micrograms as the first dose and then another 500 micrograms in six hours. Some confident people actually sometimes give it all as one great big dose, so one milligram as just one big dose. After that, the daily top-up dose is much smaller and the dose that I typically use when I'm trying to rate control AF patients is 125 micrograms once a day and that's usually given in the morning. This is a very safe daily dose of digoxin. You can have higher doses, so you can actually have a dose of 187.5 micrograms and 250 micrograms even once daily. So I've typed this out here, so you can have these larger daily doses of digoxin, so you can have a daily dose of 187.5 micrograms, and you can have the even larger daily dose of 250 micrograms once daily. Now, I usually go for this daily dose because it's an extremely safe dose of digoxin to give to people. If you're going to use these higher daily doses, then you need to be very careful and make sure that the individual you're giving them to um, has good renal function. So remember, digoxin is removed from the body by the kidneys. So you need to make sure that their kidneys are functioning well and are going to be able to remove this much of the drug so that the levels of it aren't going to build up to dangerous levels. So the dose of 125 micrograms once daily is safe in most renal functions. It's only when people have very bad kidney function, so EGFR less than 15, that this dose is no longer safe. And at that low level of renal function, you can reduce it down to a daily dose of 62.5 micrograms once daily. Or you might want to consider stopping the drug altogether if someone's got this impaired, this level of renal impairment. The other situation where you might want to consider using this very small dose of digoxin, the 62.5 micrograms once daily dose, is if the patient is extremely frail. But even in that situation where you've got a very frail elderly lady, if they've got good renal function, I often still use the dose of 125 micrograms once daily. It is safe and it's incredibly effective at rate controlling AF usually. This is the only dose that I, as a junior doctor, tend to use on my own. I wouldn't be putting someone on these higher doses without senior input, and I wouldn't usually prescribe this smaller dose, because if someone does have significantly impaired renal function, an EGFR less than 15, which is very, very bad renal function, I probably wouldn't be prescribing them digoxin at all without senior input.